Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining our You Are Come Live tour of the move-in process of 2019. We really appreciate you guys tuning in today. My name is Channing and I'm a senior communication major on campus. I am from Springdale, Arkansas, which is right next door to Fayetteville. So I love this area. You chose a great place to live in. Um, if you guys have any questions today, please comment those throughout the video and we will be sure to answer those for you guys. And behind the camera today recording for us is Christopher. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> um, yeah, be sure and let us know where you're from and because uh, we want to answer all your questions. Uh, where are we right now? So right now we are in Reed Hall. So mm -hmm. this is kind of where we're going to show you the move-in process. We're uh, right near the lot that you will move in um, if you're in Reed. So also, um, we're lucky enough today to have someone from housing join us today. So we have Billy Blunt with us today. Hi guys, how is everyone? Doing well. So Good glad to, see you, to have you here. We're excited about move-in. Literally months of planning go into the process every year uh, to make this happen. So we're looking forward to seeing most of you the end of next week uh, as we get ready for move-in. So we're going to try to give you some tips and hopefully answer any questions you have about our process. I, I like your stylish vest there. Ah, uh, yes. Well, as you see these <laughs> as you pull through the parking lot, uh, remember our staff are out in the parking lot. So please just be slow, be patient. Um, as you're driving car, just enjoy we'll to keep our staff safe out there um, as we go through. And remember, they've been out in the hot sun for hours probably before you may have even arrived. So uh, give them a heads up and a little thank you for their hard work. It is the Arkansas summer. It can get pretty hot sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we can start off with some things that you shouldn't bring to move in. Exactly. So one of the common things is people forget about is what should I not bring to move in every year? Uh, we'll start with Captain Obvious here, uh, the U-Haul. Uh, we know that you have a lot of stuff, maybe you have more, but we you can't bring the U-Haul into the parking lot. The reason is our parking lots, in many cases, next to the buildings are really small. So what we try to do is get as many cars in the area and get you as close to our building as possible. And a U-Haul just makes it really difficult to turn, to get around, to get in. So if you do bring a U-Haul, you will not be able to pull into your lot for move-in. Your only option will be to park inside of lot 56, which is on the south end of campus if you bring a U-Haul. If you're on the north end of campus, that's not going to be real convenient for you. So keep it short, keep it simple. Don't bring your U-Haul. Be smart, pack things in boxes. Uh, you don't need the super heavy coat in August, okay? So if you're going to go home between now and Thanksgiving, you can bring it back when you come. Be smart, but leave those U-Hauls at home. The other thing we've got uh, is our dear friend Ruffy here. Uh -huh. now, Ruffy may uh, seem like a little funny pet to you. Um, and you know, we know you love Ruffy very much, but we do. on move-in day, not the time to bring Ruffy because okay. their students cannot bring an animal into the residence hall unless it's an approved um, animal that is some type of service animal. Mm -hmm. So please, you cannot bring your animals with you on move-in day, and obviously you don't want to leave it in the car when it's very hot. So please, we love Ruffy, but let's leave <laughs> Ruffy at home and take care of him for move-in day. Maybe we can FaceTime with Ruffy once we get here. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, but as you go through the move-in process, those are really the two main things. If you go to the movein.york.edu website, you will see a full list of items not to bring. But if you specifically remember, no U-Hauls, leave your pets at home, that'll be a great start. Yeah. yeah. Um, so could you tell us a little bit about how move-in arrival works? Okay. So for move-in arrival, hopefully you've already picked your arrival time online and you've gotten, every, and you've gotten that done. Um, luckily, when we looked... Uh, I think we had almost 1,300 students pick an arrival time in the first 24 hours that oh, it was wow. open. So crazy, but good job, guys. You did what you were supposed to do. Uh, if you picked an arrival time before July 17th, you got something that looked like this, either in the mail in the last couple of days or should be coming to you any day now. Uh, we were told by the printers that they should arrive to everyone by Saturday or Monday at the latest. So this is what's called an arrival pass. And we want to kind of talk a little bit about what this means. So as you can see, for you guys, when you get it, you'll pop out the top, hang it in your dashboard. A couple things we want you to know on here. First, it will say the four digit letter for your building. Now we're in Reed and Reed happens to be four letters. So it's really convenient. <laughs> but right. for like say Maple Hill West, it will have different item. It'll have different letters on it that you'll do. Those four letter codes are going to be really important. And we're going to show you why here in a second. It'll have your name, the day you arrive, and in big red colors, the time you arrive. If there's one thing we really want to stress to you, please don't come before your arrival time. We plan very meticulously how many cars can be in the lot at each time. If people show up an hour before their time, it makes it hard because we are not accounting for you. So please make sure you don't come into the parking lot until the red arrival time is printed on your thing. There will also be a phone number here. 
if it's the wrong phone number not correct you can go ahead and rewrite it in for us that would be awesome if not we'll just write it in themselves huh tell it we'll we'll get it when you get here to the parking lot um, but hang this in your car now if you applied after july 17th for arrival time or you went in and changed your arrival time after july 17th uh, we will send you an email with a it'll have kind of a paper version of this print it out put it in your dashboard and we will give you a hang tag that looks like this when you arrive for your parking lot pass and this will, this is just a blank generic one that we'll fill in when you get here so if you arrive if you applied after july 17th for your arrival time we're going to give you this when you get in on the pass a couple things i also want to point out on the one that we were able to mail to you there are two qr codes on the back of this um, and for read this one says garland garage so this if you click on the qr code it'll give you a map for parents of where to go park after move in and for students where to go park after move in. So really convenient, really close. You do see a big Cox logo down at the bottom. We want to thank our friends at Cox. They, they were our sponsors, us. yes. They sponsor these this year and they are very expensive. So we're really grateful for them for their support to hopefully make this in. The Billy, you, you mentioned uh, QR codes. Can you just tell us what those are and how they're even used? Yeah, just so the QR code is kind of the black looking box that's right uh -huh. there. Uh, pull out your smartphone, take a picture of it. Most iOS apps in specific will go right to the website. Um, they have it, makes it really convenient. Uh, but what these are, just shows you a map directly to your parking lot, your parking garage for parents or students afterwards. We're hoping we can speed up the process and you have less questions about where do I go when I'm done. Sure. I noticed that's a pink color. So like you said that all of them are kind of color coded and they are color coded. So we're going to spin around here where yeah. Christopher's at, and we've got an example of something that you will see. So we mentioned the four letter codes. This is read. And then if you were happen to be a Maple Hill West resident, you would have this four letter code. Where you turn into the parking lot, you should see a sign just like this. Um, so if this color doesn't match up with the entrance that you're trying to turn into, you're in the wrong location. Um, we encourage you to go to our housing webs to the housing site. Click on movein.uark.edu. That's a simple website, and you will see in the next week your colors that will match up, but your hang tags will match where you turn in. Um, if you are a Reed or Maple Hill West student, um, you use the same parking lot, so hence you're on the same banner. So be really particular to follow the right things. One of the biggest things that we can really recommend for you about Move In is if you go to the movein.uark.edu website, go to maps you will see the move in map for your arrival it's very very important that you actually follow that and here's why um, just like for a football game roads get changed roads get turned there's detours there's construction on campus construction yeah as the people who've driven through the summer know it's everywhere so we are trying to keep you out of the construction and make your route simple one of the biggest frustrations we see on move in day are people who don't go look at the maps and they get in the wrong location they get in the wrong traffic instead of going to the right location. Look at the map for your building. It's very specific. It'll do it. Um, a great example, if you live on the north end of campus, maybe you're in Hots or so, if you go into Google Maps, it's going to tell you to come down Garland Avenue and take a left on, Cle right, left on Cleveland and left into your parking lot. And what you're going to find out on move-in day is the entire street of Cleveland prevents a left turn. Don't listen to Siri. So Siri <laughs> will get you in trouble. So look at our maps, follow our maps, and it'll make your move in day experience much better. Joanne says, thank you for the info. Yes, yeah. We're happy to give it to you, Joanne. So let's say that the resident has moved in, had a super smooth move in. Where do they go after that? Right, okay, so for our parents, you will go to one of two locations. And again, don't forget the QR code on the back. You can do that, it'll give you a map directly to that uh, parking garage. Student parents on the north end of campus, so you will go to the Garland parking garage. You can park anywhere on floors four, five, and six, which are the three upper floors. Um, it's pretty easy to walk back from the Garland garage to pretty much all of North Campus, so it's really, really simple. Uh, for students, maybe in the central campus, let's say you're in Gregson or Founders or Humphreys, um, or you have a student at Pomfort or a Dohe, um, you can park in the Harmon Street garage um, that will be right there. Again, the map will get you there to it. Uh, that'll be a, the primary parking place for students. Uh, your QR code on the back of this will take you to Lot 56. Lot 56 is the largest commuter lot on our campus on the south end. It holds a tremendous amount of cars. That's your primary place to go. You may also park on the green lots on the west side of the football, kind of affectionately known as the 70 lots. 
you can go to those green lots as well just make sure that they allow overnight parking there is a couple that do not that have signage there that say no overnight please make sure you're parking the ones who don't have that signage you can park there but we primarily suggest everyone go to lot 56 it's right off MLK and across from Chick-fil-a so it's a really easy reference point and we did a presentation yesterday with uh, parking remember that Channing yes I yeah <laughs> and he was uh, David was saying it's very important to as soon as you get on campus come by and grab your parking pass yes. so you've got sure. that in hand and we're really talking about two different procedures arrival procedure which is what housing kind of governs and then parking which is sort of parking and transits Ballywick too so yeah. uh, I want to reference back one thing on those maps uh, if you are a Maple Hill South resident um, if you're coming in Thursday or Friday you will have one map if you're coming in on Saturday or Monday you will have another map the reason for that is we flip those two parking lots for days depending on um, our traffic flow so if you're in Maple Hill South please make sure you're paying attention to which parking lot you turn into depending on if you come in Thursday Friday versus Saturday Monday yeah, so I heard that there's a little bit um, different instructions for Reed residents um, regarding moving. Could you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, so if you're in Reed or Maple Hill West, one of the reasons that Sign again. Uh, yes. we <laughs> decided to use this parking lot is uh, for Reed or Maple Hill West, re West residents, you will go down and you will enter um, right behind the Pat Walker Health Center. There's a turnoff right there, kind of across from the administrative building on campus that you will turn and you will come up uh, kind of a service road that will go. That will allow us to stage you and bring you into the parking lot uh, as you come through. It's very important for Reed or Maple Hill West residents, you don't go directly to your building, you go to that location and we will get you up. The reason we do that, the Reed parking lot is very, very small compared to the number of residents we have. So we want to keep you out of traffic, keep you in a good situation to there and to make sure that the lot can flow efficiently. So if you're reading Maple Hill West, make sure you follow that map. Your turn will be right behind the Pat Walker Health Center, kind of across the street from the admin building. And that's a pretty sharp right as you're coming down uh, Garland yep. onto Maple as well. It's so be aware of that. soon after you turn on Garland. And, uh, and again, if you're a Hots resident or a Maple Hill, East resident or a, a resident Clark Morgan, one of the other quad buildings, please make sure you don't follow the Reed and Maple Hill West students. You'll just get yourself in traffic and go the wrong way. <laughs> Good point. So I know a lot of people have, a, have had a lot of questions about our brand new residence hall, Adobe Hall. Um, so a lot of people were concerned about move-in. So could you explain a little bit about how move-in will work at Adobe? Sure. Uh, Adohi is probably one of our most challenging things because it's a building that's been under construction most of the summer. Um, there will be an additional parking lot built for Adohi that will be to the east of the building, kind of behind the Fayetteville High School baseball field. Uh, that lot will not be ready for us at move-in. So what's going to happen at move-in for Adohi residents? Um, they, again, they will follow the map on movein.uark.edu. They will come into the lot. Um, if we go back and we reference this, we notice the four-digit code. For our Dohe residents, it will either say ADOAA or ADOAB, mm, depending okay. on their location. Um, so as they come into the lot, our staff will filter you to enter one of, one of two locations. If you're in the south end of the building, you'll park immediately in the lot that you enter into. If you're in the north, there are three locations around all three sides of the building, the west side, the north side, and the east side uh, along Stadium Drive. We will park you in one of those locations our goal is to get you as close to the building as possible. Um, I want to emphasize again, especially for our Dohe residents, uh, we're literally blocking a street to move you in. So please make sure you arrive at your arrival time as uh, I can't make up parking spaces on the street. So it's very important that you show up at your arrival time, keep things going smoothly. Um, and Channing, one thing we haven't talked about is when a student actually gets here, uh, how long they have in a lot yeah. and, and how that's going to work. Mm -hmm. Um, so for students who, as they come into a parking lot, they will have 30 minutes in the lot. Um, when you come up, depending on your building location, you'll walk somewhere near. There'll be a big key tent or it'll be right inside your building. You'll check in, get your keys. You can unload your items, take them up to your room, and then come back down. You'll have 30 minutes in the lot before you need to move your car. We ask that you be very respectful of the 30 minutes. Um, we've done our research and through years it's plenty of time for students to get their items up to the room and back down and move their cars before the next group of students arrive. So just like you want to park next to your building, please be respectful for the next group of people as well so we can get everybody in within that 30 minute window. Um, pack things in boxes, remember to leave those winter coats at home, 
uh, that will help expedite your move-in process. Billy, we got some questions that came in, so maybe we'll answer these. One from Rachel. Her daughter um, got a Palm B arrival pass, but she has moved to the quad. Does she need to pick up a new arrival pass? That is a great question, Rachel. Um, if you were a student who's in Poppert B, if you don't know, we've decided to do some renovation on Poppert B this summer while we have a, a window of opportunity. Three years of work done in one year, Four kind of? Years Four of years of work done in one year. So, so we're getting that done and completed. If you're a Poppert B resident and you moved to another place on campus that wasn't Poppert C or D wing, um, we wrote a brand new parking pass for you like this except for it has your name and all of your information already on it um, we put that in the mail yesterday so it should get to you before your move-in time to get there and it'll have all your information on it if for some reason it doesn't get there before next week don't panic just come up to the lot let us know that you are a pocket b resident we'll let you in and you'll get through you'll keep your same move-in time that you had before you'll just go to your new lot location um, with that but we did we did have these filled out and we sent them to you in the mail so hopefully they'll get to you um, before move in but we tried to do that as quickly as we could once you got your new assignment yeah Karen had a very similar question so and looks like uh, Noel has a question for us too will there be carts for students to use during move in great question Noel um, we do have a limited amount of dollies and carts that students can check out that will help them into the move in process um, but again, we have 6,000 students. We don't have 6,000 carts and dollies, right? So be smart. If you have your own dolly, you can bring it and check it out. We do have some that can check out. Um, if it's available, you're more than welcome to use it. We'll have that process going for you. But um, again, if you have your own dolly, we always recommend it because the one you get here, the ones we have may be checked out as people are using those. So use those and, and be smart to go through. A lot of people ask us about volunteers too, Channing. That's a, that's a real common question we get. Um, there are a limited number of volunteers who help do move-in. Um, all really four days of the process are going through. Uh, but remember, they are volunteers. And so if they don't come, I can't not pay them, right? Um, <laughs> so, you know, uh, as those volunteers are around, they'll help you move in your stuff. But kind of plan in the back of your head that they, you may not have a volunteer ready because depending on a lot location, how many volunteers are available at that time, there may not be as many with you as possible. So kind of plan it that, that you and your family are going to move your items in. And if a volunteer is there, we kind of jokingly say it's gravy on the biscuit. It considered an extra resource, uh, but just don't count on them being there. Sure, sure. Uh, Kim asks, can you bring a futon on move-in day? Uh, Kim, you can. You can bring a futon for move-in day if you would like to do that. Um, as you move things in your room, it's not something uncommon we see students do. Um, if I would give the tip, I may say let your student go get that futon after maybe the first couple of days of classes have settled or you know they're in their room for a few days and you're not dealing with the chaos of everyone trying to move in at the same time. It'll be a little less stressful, but you're certainly allowed, uh, allowed to bring that if you would like to. Nicole asks, do we need to label our items? I'd heard people have in the past. Uh, it is never a bad idea to label your items, particularly for volunteers helping you. It will help them remember um, where they're going and where they are. You're not required to, but certainly a great idea. And then one more question about the dollies. Um, where do you go to check out your moving carts? And I guess maybe we could talk about the process, which I think means you leave your ID with them. Yeah, let's talk about that. So one thing you need to bring with you is your student ID. Um, when you get to the check-in tent um, at the campus, what we're going to do is two things. Um, we're going to check you in remotely there. Uh, and then we're going to hand you your keys and then we're going to hold your ID uh, and we'll take it into the front desk of your zone residence hall. So depending on where that is, that'll be different locations. We'll hold your ID and you'll hold your ID to you either return your paper room inventory form. So if you're in Hots or the Maples or one of the four quad buildings um, or Duncan Avenue apartments, you'll have a paper. Uh, form to fill out to complete your online room. Everyone else will do it online this year, so that's a big change. We only had a couple buildings we beta tested with last year. We're rolling that out to much of campus this year. Uh, you'll complete that online in your room once you get up there. It should take you about 10 minutes very quickly to do that process, then you'll come back online um, and get your ID. But you, yes, you can check items out, dollies. Um, typically, there's different locations depending on where we are, but more often than not, they're around the front desk area in most cases. 
Kim asks, are there any students for hire that will help with move in? <laughs> not, not through us necessarily, but whatever private arrangements you make or, or your own business. You can find, if there's anybody looking for some money, I guess there's a job opportunity for you. Yeah. I would tell, I'm sorry, I would tell you, Kim, I think most people would tell you move in is really not that stressful. Um, once you, if you come in and you follow our directions, you show up at your arrival time, you have things packed in boxes. Um, if you're just smart about the process, it'll go really, really smoothly for you. And so, uh, most people are smart about what they bring into a residence hall room. So I think you'll, I think you'll be okay. I think honestly, they'll have a less stressful time here than they will when they go to the stores around the area yeah. after move in. Yeah, it'll be a little busy. Yes. <laughs> it can be pretty chaotic on those days. Yeah. Let's see. Well, that's all that we have right now. Awesome. Well, yeah. Billy was able to give us a lot of great info. Do you have any final advice, thoughts for the residents? Hey, our last two things, follow those move-in maps at movein.uart.edu. Look for your color codes uh, that are on your signs. Follow mm -hmm, those. Mm -hmm. That'll really help you as you're going through campus. Um, and then last but not least, show up at your arrival time. Please don't come early. It makes life difficult for you and for other residents. So you do those things, you'll have a great moving day, and we can't wait to see you next week. Billy, I think we got two last questions let's coming. Go. Up. Let's so go. let's take two last ones All before right. we sign off. Uh, Dee asked, because he just logged in, uh, or she just logged in, where do you get the pink pass if you if it did not come in the mail? Okay. And so if, repeat that again. If you if you picked an arrival time before July 17th, you'll get this pink pass in the you pink or pass in the appropriate mail. colored one. Yeah. yeah, it depends on there are different colors for different zones. Is that? But um, if you get a pink pass for Reed, other colors have different zones. So that mm -hmm. depends on that. If you did it before July 17th, you should get it in the mail Monday or by late, no later than Monday or Tuesday of next week. Mm -hmm. A lot of students have already gotten them. We've got calls and we'd ask the printers really to try to have every, everything there by today. We know delays in mail happen not. If you did it after the 17th of July, we'll send you an email, print it out, put it on your dashboard. And then as you get into the parking lot, we'll fill one of these out for you to get in. Um, I would tell you if you, if you accidentally forget your arrival pass at home, don't panic. We're not going to not let you in the <laughs> lot. Um, we'll let you come in for move in, but do try to remember it because it will help everyone from our staff in the field mm -hmm. to officers who are helping out to see those colors because they know what they mean and they could get you going in the right direction. So we said we do two last ones. Cynthia asks, how many people are scheduled to move in uh, each hall at each time? Okay. Um, it de truly depends on the parking lot size. So basically what we do is if a parking lot has, um, for easy number, um, 100, 100 parking spaces, we assume that every student's probably going to come with themselves and a parent. So that's two parking spaces per thing. So we would never allow more in that situation, uh, more than 50 students to arrive at one time to get everybody into the lot. Um, and we try to stagger things to, to balance that out a little bit as well. Uh, but it really depends on location. If you're in Humphreys or Yoko, a tower in the center of campus, you'll have more students moving in at one time than you would have versus a smaller lot like Reed. It's a little bit more limited to the, per, the time space. But we spend a lot of time trying to make the logistics and math of that work. So uh, we, we've never closed a lot yet because we were too full um, if people did what they're supposed to. So I think we'll be good. Great, great. Well, thanks again for all that information, and we love all the questions we're getting. We'll continue to monitor these questions as they come in, yeah. but uh, what do you think, Channing? Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope that this eased a little bit of nerves about moving. You're in great hands here at the university. I absolutely love this campus. You chose a great one. So welcome to the University of Arkansas. All right. And that's our last one. That's our last our one. Last year, our last come Live. Our last one. We had a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys were able to learn see some more of campus and we can't wait for you guys to get here. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.